Hello, this is Kim Possible, and I thank you for tuning in to my next episode. This episode, I'm going to do an interview style, okay? So let me just jump right into it so we can get going, okay? In 1 Thessalonians 5 and 12, it says, To get to know those, to get to know those who labor among you, recognize them for who they are, acknowledge and appreciate and respect them. I was born in Detroit. By the time I was 12 years old, I went to, we moved to South Carolina. I didn't like the move, but I got over it. By the time I was 13, I had my first abortion. Of course, I didn't even know I was having an abortion. I just went to the doctor, and they gave me a shot in my arm, and I woke up at home. And at the time, it was my best friend's mother. She the one told me the next day, well, you know you're not pregnant no more. I was too young to even ask why. I was just like, oh, so that mean I ain't going to be throwing up? Good. You know, I ain't even really know that I sinned against God or anything like that. And of course, two years later, I was 15, pregnant again. I had my son when I was 15 years old. I was in the 10th grade, so I had to learn how to go to school, deal with what I had to deal with in school. You know it wasn't easy, you walking through school pregnant at 15, okay? So I had to learn how to deal with that. But by the grace of God, I was able to graduate. When I was graduating, walking down the stage to get my diploma, my son was two and a half years old, okay? So after I graduate, in 88, I moved back to Detroit, and then I started hanging out with the wrong crowd, and I fell in love with a drug dealer, and I started shacking up with a drug dealer. But by the time I was 21, I got shot five times. He was left paralyzed, and I was left messed up emotionally. Um, after I got shot, I, I had to deal with depression. Even after my wounds began to heal and I began to walk and begin to get back out, I was so messed up um, with just getting shot the way I did. I got shot in front of my house. I never saw it coming. So I was scared to do a lot of things. Before that, I would go to the drive-in movie theaters. Right now, I don't do that. Before that, I may have went downtown to the fireworks. I don't, I don't be in large crowds. I don't do any of that at all. That really changed me. But for the most part, I, I was depressed. You get what I'm saying? Because I needed somebody to help me. I needed somebody to wrap my wounds. I needed somebody to, it, it, was just, it was just hard. But I wasn't depressed like your normal person. It was more manic depressive. I just did obsessive. I was always doing this, always on the go, always thinking of that. You know, I had all this high energy. I didn't want to sleep. I was up all the time. I had mood swings. I had anxieties. I was irritated real quick with people, you know, and just sex was excessive. You know, it was all day, all night. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, in a way, it was it was real hoish of me. Like, I had real hoish ways. But it was really my way to get my mind off of what was going on. You get what I'm saying? I had five gunshot wounds. I was all messed up. Everybody was talking about it. Every time I looked down at my body or took a bath, I was reminded of it. So I had to deal with that mentally, mentally. And my way of coping with it, you know, was going out, having sex, getting tattoos, doing extreme stuff, running from the police. Just everything I was doing was just real extreme, but I didn't know it was a form of depression. Okay, so I did deal with that. I ain't going to lie to you. The best thing about me being out there in the streets was I met this lady. Of course, I, I ain't going to lie. I was selling heroin to her. And she introduced me 
to her daughter. I had been selling to her for a couple of times. I was like 22 then. This was like probably eight months after I had got shot. And I was selling heroin at the time. This guy was going where he was selling heroin. So I would ask him to give me a couple of bags so I could make my own money. And he would give me a couple of bags. And my father, you know, they was all in the methadone clinic. They knew all the heroin addicts and everything. So he hooked me up with everything. But this one lady in particular, she told me, she said, I want you to come to my house. So I went over to her house and I went in the back room and I met. She had a, a little girl, seven months old. She was seven months old. And I'm talking about she was the... Prettiest child I had ever seen. Prettiest child I had ever seen. And I had to have her. I did. So I asked her mother. I said, can I keep her? Let me keep her. Let me keep her. Let me keep her. So her mother told me to come back the next day. So when I went back the next day, the mother let me keep her. And that was in 19, the end of 19. It was the beginning of 1992. I think it was probably like February 1992 or something like that. Yeah, for March or April 1992, because she was seven months old. And, oh my God, it, she, was, she was a blessing. She was a blessing. So I ended up adopting her. I ended up adopting her. That's my baby girl now. Of course, now she's grown and she looks just like me. Okay, but I think that was the the blessing that I saw through a curse thing. Meaning, though I was doing wrong, you know, I ain't had no business out there trying to be selling no drugs. That was wrong. I was wrong for even being with a guy selling drugs. He was wrong for even giving them to me. But in spite of all of that, I saw God's mercy because it was beauty in that. I got to um, meet my daughter and adopt my daughter. And after that, I adopted another child. I adopted a little boy. I had one, and I adopted two. And my daughter, she really kept me from doing a lot of things because my son, they seemed like they loved me regardless. No matter what I got into, no matter what I did, I was still their mother. But with my daughter, she would look at me like, what is you doing? What you mean? And you what? So I had to change a lot because I had a little girl. I didn't want her to grow up being like me. I didn't want her growing up making the mistakes I made. I didn't want her talking to no street guys, no drug dealers. I didn't ever want to be where I couldn't sleep because I was afraid that she was going to be in something tragedy like I was. You know, I hated that my mother got the phone call. Your daughter just got shot five times. The adoption was good. I don't think I regretted it until they got older. And then I started seeing no matter how much I loved them, no matter how much I did for them, no matter what kind of life I provided for them, they're going to always want their natural mother. And that hurt me. It hurt me a lot. And falling in love, yeah. I done loved a lot. I done hurt a lot. I done used people. They done used me. I done abused people. They didn't abuse me. You know, in relationships, I've always felt like I got what I, give, what I dished out. You know what I'm saying? Earlier in my life, I was just thinking about myself. I wanted to be with somebody that only thought about me, that let me have my way, let me do what I want to do. And then later on in life, when I got a little older, because of the wrong that I did, I never thought I would get anyone that really loves me. So in my first marriage, whatever I took off of my first husband, I felt that it was something that I did years ago. So I just dealt with it. I started going to church at 30 years old. And I think the best thing about that is I got to see, in spite of my craziness, in spite of all the negativity that everybody else seeing me, in spite of me getting shot, in spite of all of the things that I've done wrong, God still loved me. He still loved me. Outside of being a mother, outside of having money, outside of my credit, outside of my cars, outside of my beauty, outside of any of that. The fact that I can pray and talk to God, you know, on the streets, you want to talk to the, to the, to the man, you know what I'm saying? In your job, you want to know the boss, you know, everybody got somebody that they want to, to know, or they want them to know who they are. Well, to be able to pray and talk to God, I felt like, shoot, Hey, I'm hurt. You mean to tell me that 
I ain't got to go through this person to this person and know somebody to know somebody. And I ain't got to go do this and do that. And I ain't got to do none of that no more. I can just pray and talk to God. That gave me a level of confidence that made me just be like, hey, <laughs> we can look at other people and feel like we insignificant. And even like now with Facebook, you got people got all these followers. You got all these Instagrams. You got people getting paid for YouTube. And you will look at yourself like, what am I doing? I'm insignificant. You know, like, dang, look at them. They got it going on. And now everybody got, you know, they got all this and all that with their body going on. And I'm looking at me like, dang, I, if I can just lose 10 pounds, you know what I'm saying? But I just keep reminding myself, the best thing about me is that I can communicate with God. I have a relationship with God. I may not ever get to sit in the front row of anywhere. Nobody may not ever invite me. I may not get to know um, Oprah and Tyler Perry and Mary J. Blige. I may not get to know, get to ever see them. They may not ever even know anything about me. But to know that God, he knows my name. I can pray and get a prayer through. That, that blesses me a lot, a lot, a lot. Let me tell you something. God will restore all the energy, all the prayers, all the, 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 the things that I wanted in my first marriage, all the things that I ever wanted my husband to do in my first marriage. Listen, even though my first marriage did not work out in my second marriage now with my husband, now who I'm married to, he does all of that. I'm talking about I can be washing dishes and he'll just come up behind me and hold me. We can be laying down watching TV and he'll just come up and hold me. All the affection and all the attention that I wanted, I get from my husband. It is just so awesome. So what you have to understand, let me tell you this. I don't care what you do in a relationship. Sow your seeds unto God. If you're loving somebody and they seem like they're not loving you back, continue to love them. Allow God to use that as a seed. You understand what I'm saying? Because everything we do, we do it unto the Lord. So in my first marriage, I still loved. I still served. I still helped. I was very submissive. I didn't have a lot of mouth. I didn't have a lot of back talk. I stopped going out at night. I stopped hanging out with a lot of people. I did everything that I knew to do for him to be satisfied. And though it seemed like he was never satisfied, I still did it. But now I realize those were seeds that was being planted. And now with my husband who I'm married to, now I'm walking in my harvest. Because I don't have to pray for that anymore. I don't have to ask God for that anymore. My husband just, I mean, I can really feel his love. Do you understand what I'm saying? What I wanted in my first marriage when God said he'll restore, he gave it, I'm getting it now. You get what I'm saying? So I don't care what's going on in your relationship. You do your part. Do not repay evil for evil. Don't get back because he gone all, all night. Now you're going to get up and you're going to go all night. Do not do any of that. Because in your next relationship, you'll get it. Know you got it coming. Know you have it coming. Forget what the negative people say. Forget all that. Don't worry about that. Listen, you are an example. Just like I'm an example, you are an example. Everything that you're doing is seed sown. And you got to know your harvest is coming. I'm walking into my harvest right now. I'm, I mean, God is just overflowing me with blessings. Now, if I had my way, it would have happened 10 years ago. But it didn't. But right now... I'm walking in it, okay? I'm walking in it. I'm 50 years old, but I feel like I'm 35 because he has renewed my strength. Yeah. Other than these hot flashes. <laughs> Other than these hot flashes. He has renewed my strength. He has given me a new burst of energy. Do you understand what I'm saying? Things that used to bother me and irritate me, now it's just like, psh, go ahead on. You get what I'm saying? You grow and you learn. I believe I've done a lot of growing. I've learned a lot. I have. I've learned a lot. So listen, 
This is Kim Possible. It's time for me to wrap it up now. And I just want to wish you the ble- wish you the best. And I thank you for tuning in to my episode, Save But Not Innocent. Bye-bye.